Red and Blue. I'm Weijia Jiang in Washington. Thank you for joining us. We begin with the political fallout from those unidentified objects brought down on the orders of President Biden. Questions mounted this weekend from reporters and from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. And today, the White House gave out some new information. Members of Congress, including the chairman and the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, claim the administration isn't sharing enough about the objects. At the White House press briefing today, NSC spokesperson John Kirby said that lawmakers will receive more briefings this week. Here's what he had to say when asked why President Biden hasn't addressed the nation on these objects. We have been, uh, uh, I think, as transparent as we can be. I, I won't speak for the president's uh, uh, personal uh, speaking schedule, but, I mean, he has been deeply engaged in uh, every one of these decisions. He's been kept informed, including as of this morning, on uh, what's going on with recovery efforts, um, and, uh, and uh, he's very much staying on top of the issue. The latest incident took place when the U.S. military downed another of those aerial objects over Lake Huron Sunday. It is the third one taken down over the U.S. and Canada in the span of three days. For more on this, Nancy Cordes and Zach Hudak joins us now. Nancy is CBS News' chief White House correspondent, and Zach is a CBS News congressional reporter. Thank you both for joining us. Nancy, I want to start with you because John Kirby took questions for about an hour. You were among the reporters asking those questions. What were your main takeaways today? Uh, well, the main takeaways appear to be that they still really don't know exactly what any of these three objects were. Uh, we've gotten vague descriptions of them. One was roughly the size of a car. One was more cylindrically shaped. One was octagonally shaped with some strings hanging off of it. But beyond that, because uh, search teams have not been able to recover the debris from these objects yet, there isn't that much more that U.S. officials can say about what exactly they were. Uh, now, Kirby did say that they were able to determine that they probably didn't have a, a, the capability to send communication signals the way that the Chinese spy balloon could a week ago. They probably Probably also didn't have the ability to propel or maneuver themselves the way that the spy balloon could. So essentially, they were drifting on the wind. But beyond that, uh, they really couldn't describe for us uh, what these objects were doing there, how long they had been in the skies, whether there was um, any nefarious intent here or whether these were simply <clears throat> old weather balloons. There's just a lot we still don't know. Uh, one thing the White House wanted us to know that they repeated a few times was that they don't think this is aliens or extraterrestrial <laughs> activity, Nancy. If they don't know what these things are, why do they say that with such certainty? And, and you know, I know you guys really tried. I was watching and it was pretty painful. But why now? Why shoot these things down now? Is it because these are new objects or is it because they're just now detecting them? Right. So we did ask about that a number of times. And what John Kirby would say is that um, over the past year and a half or so, uh, the president has convened a, a working group to look at these objects that apparently they were aware that they were up there or out there or they've become aware with uh, sensitivity of, of radar improving. Uh, they could see them, but they still didn't know exactly what they were. Um, you know, he described the fact that you can you can do a flyby with a, a re reconnaissance plane, uh, but that still doesn't mean that you can determine exactly what this thing is. You can get some pictures, but it can still be difficult to determine what exactly it is and what its purpose is. Um, apparently, using those pictures, they were somehow able to determine that at least, at the very least, these objects were man-made, which is why they stressed that they were not UFOs. And that may sound like a punchline, and it did get some laughter in the White House briefing room, but this is a genuine question that has come up uh, in news articles, among members of the public. What in the world are these things? And so they did uh, feel the need, apparently, to put at least that theory to rest. Well, and it came up over the weekend when there was a press conference and um, a top commander said that they weren't ruling that out, that they weren't ruling anything out. Um, so, Zach, it's not just reporters, of course, who have questions. We heard from lawmakers on all the Sunday shows yesterday um, who had a lot to say about these UFOs. I want to take a listen and then chat with you on the other side. 
The Biden administration needs to stop briefing Congress through our television sets and actually come and sit down and brief us. What we're seeing here is a number of announcements by the administration without any real information being given to Congress. By the way, I, I, I have real concerns about why the uh, administration is not being more forthcoming with everything that it knows. What's gone on the last, uh, you know, two weeks or so, 10 days, has been uh, nothing short of um, craziness. And uh, the military needs to have a plan to not only determine uh, what's out there, but determine the dangers that go with it. So we heard from John Kirby, who said that they were going to get more briefings this week. But it sounds like they want to know why they weren't kept in the loop this entire time. Right. That's right. Weija. And these members aren't just concerned about the fact that they're learning things on television. They're learning what the White House knows on television. But they're concerned with uh, something that uh, Nancy was really pointing out there, that the White House, at least as far as they're telling us, there's a lot they don't know. And that's a big concern members of Congress, particularly those who are connected to the intelligence community. I was talking recently to a member who sits on Intel who said, the question is, why are we just answering these questions now? I mean, we should have s significant yeah, information on all of these objects flying around before it comes to the point that we're shooting one down and then shooting several others down. We should have known long ago what was going on and why China was up to this. So there's frustration on the part of communication, but also on the part of just members feeling like the White House and the administration has not done enough to stay ahead of this situation and know what was going on. And they've also criticized President Biden for the way he handled this. Um, is there mounting pressure for the president to uh, not only address you know, them, but address the nation about what's going on in the sky? There certainly is, Weija. Uh, tomorrow, there will be a briefing with all members of the Senate on the latest in the situation, and that's very much the result of pressure from Capitol Hill on the White House, members saying we need more information. But I, I think you're hitting on something that is to come, that members are starting to say, our constituents are worried about this. Our constituents need some reassurance that this country is ahead of this, that we're not going to be spied on, let alone attacked, without us knowing. And that might require Biden to speak directly to the American public and explain the situation and reassure Americans that we are on top of this. We are ahead of China in these uh, espionage areas, and we are not uh, getting caught off guard on these things, or at least in the future, we won't be caught off guard as we seem to be these past couple weeks. And Nancy, based on your conversations with sources in the White House, does it seem like the president is preparing some sort of an address to the nation about, um, you know, his policy surrounding these objects? They realize that reporters and lawmakers have a high interest in this situation and that uh, it's really the president himself who's the one who can answer some of these questions, particularly the question about what the new standard is going to be, when he is going to decide to say yes, pull the trigger, shoot this particular object down. Is it simply any object that is not identified, that is uh, in civilian airspace and, and, and commercial jet corridors? Uh, or is he going to be more selective? And if he is going to be more selective, what are his criteria going to be? Those are the kinds of questions that lawmakers are asking. And I've been told that it is likely that we will hear from the president himself on this issue in the next couple of days, though I haven't heard what form uh, that communication is going to take. And Zach, I want to chat with you real quick about another um, a headline from today, because President Biden doesn't really fire a lot of people, even though um, he has the authority to do that. And it's been almost two years in. But he did fire the architect of the Capitol uh, today. He's the only person who had that ability. What can you tell us about why he was fired and what happens next? Weijia, there were a couple big reasons. The biggest being the architect of the Capitol is sort of the highest ranking logistical person in the Capitol. They oversee over 2,000 people. They sit on the Capitol Police Board and therefore oversee the Capitol Police and make decisions on whether extra security is needed. Not only that, they oversee the custodial staff. They oversee changes made in the building. So this is a high ranking person in the Capitol complex. And Bill Blant, or excuse me, Brett Blanton, the architect of the Capitol, was not here on January, January 6, 2021. He was off premise running things from his vehicle. So that really irked a number of members, particularly Norma Torres, who described in a hearing with uh, Mr. Uh, Blanton last week 
how she was stuck in the house chamber as most other members were evacuated. And I was actually there watching this play out. Capitol Police, a lot of them up there didn't know what to do. So she was kind of pinning that on uh, Blanton, saying, you weren't there. You were the guy in charge, and you physically <laughs> weren't here. Now, there were a couple other small pieces that came out in a Inspector General report, including that Blanton had been letting his family, his wife and daughter, use his uh, official vehicle, and he was driving it long distances for vacations. So there were some ethical issues, but also sort of a dereliction of duty, I think, is how a lot of people saw it, as he should have been here physically when the building that he is charged with overseeing was attacked. Um, and Nancy, I know that, you know, we all have balloons and UFOs on the brain, but there are other things that the White House is focusing on. And one thing we haven't heard much about is what's next for the debt ceiling. The last we heard, uh, the president and McCarthy had a meeting. They said those talks would continue. Is there any news on when they might meet up again? Uh, not that I'm aware of. You know, both sides have kind of gone back to their um, respective corners to hash this out. Uh, the president has been pushing McCarthy to sort of show his cards and say what it is that he'd like to cut and vice versa. McCarthy wants to hear from the president on what he's willing to cut. The president laid down that gauntlet at the State of the Union address last week. Um, and now we watch to see uh, who blinks first and, and who comes forward. The next milestone, I suppose, will be uh, in about uh, four, three or four weeks or so when the president has to release his budget, his proposed budget for the next year. And that might be one of the first hints we get about whether he truly is willing to make any uh, any spending cuts. And if so, where those cuts would come from. Budget and balloons. I know you both will be tracking those for us. Thank you, Nancy Cordes and Zach Hudak.